Hello and welcome to the MOOC Tailored Material and Enzymes for Industrial Processes. My name is Robert Kulist, and in the second unit of the basic module, I would like to talk about the choice of the production host. In the last video, I discussed what is an enzyme and also what does a successful enzyme need to be applied in a process, what are the important properties. And today I would like to talk about the importance of biocatalyst production, then what choice of organisms do we have and what is the most appropriate organism for a particular enzyme. And then there is an important question, shall we use the natural producer or a genetically modified organism? And finally, I want to highlight a few important points that should be considered. So an efficient biocatalytic process aims to convert a substrate to a product. And of course, our enzyme facilitates this process. And by adding more enzyme, we can make it more faster. So we want to achieve um, a high volumetric productivity. And here we show you a few target values for a successful process. So these numbers were taken from the publications here shown left in the left lower corner. And they will be discussed more in details uh, later on in this MOOC. So right now, I just want to give a, like an orientation. So obviously, a good process should have a very high substrate co conversion. We want to achieve complete conversion of the substrate into the product. And if it's a stereoselective process, the product should be formed in an excellent or an optically purity. And we want to achieve a very high substrate loading. And when we use here um, a cofactor, it should be like an industrial scale used uh, has a total turnover number of 100,000, and we should have cofactor loadings of less than 0.1 mole percent. A very important parameter is the enzyme load. And here we have to distinguish between pharmaceuticals and bulk chemicals simply because for a pharmaceutical intermediate, we can achieve a much higher price than for a bulk chemical, which is produced in ton scale. And this means, and, uh, if, if you, for instance, look on the dry cell weight, and we have to, and if, for pharmaceutical, it's sufficient to produce 35 kilogram of a product with one kilogram cell dry weight. And talking about the free enzyme, we the, the value is 250 kilogram product. For a bulk chemical, we have to produce as much as two tons per pro product per one kilogram cell dry weight. And this shows that the production of the enzyme is a crucial cost factor for any process. So we have the biotransformation itself, where we have the biocatalyst productivity, and the cost here of the free enzyme is in the enzyme production. And here also we have an enzyme yield, which means we have the gram of enzyme per liter cultivation volume, and also the gram enzyme per gram biomass. So typically with a microorganism, we can achieve um, cell dry weights, uh, cell densities of if from a few gram per liter up to perhaps 100 or 120 gram per liter. And then it's also important how much enzyme is contained in this biomass. And this brings us to the choice of the production host. Bacteria are frequently used both for research and production. They are easy to manipulate, they grow fast, and the cultivation is simple and efficient. There are a few drawbacks. So for some specific enzymes, there is inclusion body formation. This has various reasons. For instance, um, disulfide bond containing uh, enzymes are a challenge for production in bacteria. In some cases, this can be solved, but in some cases, it does not work or it works only with very low efficiency. And bacteria offer few options for post-translational modifications. Fungal hosts are widely used in research and production. They are also easy to manipulate. They grow fast. The cultivation is also efficient. You know, they grow a bit slower than bacteria, but not much. And they offer very efficient protein export. There are some bacterial hosts where we can pro and export pro um, proteins efficiently, for instance, bacillus. But this is generally a feature in many fungal hosts, and it saves the need to um, open the cells with cell disruption, and this is very energy intensive. Fungal producers also are quite efficient with post-translation modifications. 
The manipulation is a bit more difficult for, than for bacteria and compared to um, animal cells, um, the glycosylation patterns differ quite strongly from animals and human. And this means that it is a problem for thera- this is a problem for therapeutic proteins that have glycosylation sites because the different glycosylation is um, recognized by the immune system. So in many cases, bacteria are used for as re- uh, as host for research of an enzyme because there we do not need to obtain so much of the soluble enzyme, and then the production is done in the fungal system. And fungal systems are also preferred for low price enzymes simply because they are often uh, more cost uh, more cost efficient than bacteria cell cultures are uh, are very difficult and expensive to cultivate they offer authentic post translation modification that accepted by the um, or to- tolerated by the human immune system and they are the method- cell cultures are the m- um, method of choice for proteins that we cannot produce in bacteria and fungi for instance because of these post-translation modifications, processing, disulfid bonds, or glycosylation patterns. They are very difficult to manipulate. The cultivation is complex, requires highly sterile conditions, and the growth media are very expensive. So um, this here is the method of choice for therapeutic proteins. Industrial enzymes are usually produced in bacteria or in fungal hosts. A very important question is whether I should produce the enzyme in the natural producer or in the genetically modified organism. And um, we discussed this briefly in the last video, and I gave you here a quite striking example. There is on the right side, you see the protease papain that can be isolated from papaya fruits. This is used for meat tenderizer. This is something people will put on their foot if you want to eat that. Here, um, uh, plant pathogens are not a risk for humans. And uh, if we eat the fruit, we can also take some ingredients for our foot. This is something quite accepted and low risk. And also in this case, the protease can be obtained in high yield from uh, the quite abundant papaya fruit. And it is a striking advantage is we do not need a sterile process. It is very energy in- intensive to um, to sterilize a reactor to work with a genetically modified strain. And therefore, the simple extraction of an enzyme from a wild type organism is a cheap option. The same case with an animal producer has a, it gives quite a different picture. We have ethical concerns, and um, the isolation of this esterase here from porcine liver is quite efficient also. So we can, with a simple acetone extraction, we can get out a lot. And this is a very selective enzyme, so it has been used for many applications. But ethical considerations mean uh, vegetarians will have a huge problem with this, and any product cannot be sold as kosher or halal because this. A material derived from pigs, and also because of the contamination risks of virus or other animal pathogens that could be also dangerous for the humans, this is prohibitive nowadays for the production of pharmaceutical products. So here it is necessary to use a genetically modified organism. So this were two admittedly quite drastic examples, and the regular situation is that uh, we use a microbial enzyme and we can produce this either in the wild type or we take out the gene and then work in a genetically modified organism. So in a wild type, uh, there are not so many ethical problems. And unless the bacterium is a dangerous pathogen, it is quite easy to cultivate it and to use the enzyme from the natural producer. The problem is a bit more that our enzyme of interest, which I highlighted here in blue, is only a part of the protein fraction. And we need to find conditions to induce the production. This enzyme has a function, and therefore there will be promoters that are regulated in certain conditions, and we would need to find this out for every enzyme. If we use um, a genetically modified organism, this means we put either our the gene of our enzyme on a vector, or we even integrate the gene into the genome. In both cases, we can produce more of our enzyme, so more of the total protein fraction, which makes it easier to purify the enzyme, also if we use a cell-free extract with all proteins, then we still have less side reactions because we have more of our enzyme. And um, we can control now, we can add the regulatory elements that we want, and therefore we can avoid this tedious search for the best 
conditions. So we simply, we know the regulatory uh, elements well, we know how to use them, and we can then apply them in the same way for almost any enzyme. Usually for enzyme production, a vector encoded gene is preferred simply because I have a higher copy number of a plasmid than of the genome, and this results also, also in more enzymes. So the typical plasmid that would be used would have a copy number between 10, 20, whereas the genome has one per cell. And uh, these plasmids are called low copy plasmids because they are plasmids with higher concentration, but this means we have the more 10 or 20 fold higher concentration than the genome. A very important difference between the production in a wild type organism or a natural producer and in a genetically modified organism is the ease to mutate the protein, to change it, which means to change the properties of the protein or the enzyme by insertion of mutations into the gene. So um, in the natural producer, mutagenesis is difficult, and particularly in directed mutagenesis is difficult. In the case of in the case of a genetically modified organism, I can isolate the gene, which means bring it out of the cell, for instance, by chemical synthesis of the gene or by an amplification, by polymerase chain reaction. And then I can introduce a mutation in vitro and then put it back into the cell and then obtain in the cell a modified protein. So this is very, very hard to achieve in the wild type organism. So right now for enzyme engineering, almost exclusively, exclusively genetically modified organisms are used. So um, it should not be forgotten, however, that the use of GMO has regulatory consequences. So for some applications, it can be a problem if we produce the enzyme in a genetically modified organism. For instance, if the product has to get a label like a kind of natural or an organic product, then this can be an issue, and this would be a reason to work with a wild type organism. For the majority of enzymes that are produced nowadays, however, a genetically modified organism is used. In order to achieve a successful process, a few important points should be considered. The choice of the production organism is very important. Is it a bacterium, a yeast, or an animal cell? Then the ease of manipulation, availability of tools, and the growth rate. What possible cell density can I achieve? What is the growth medium I can use? Do I have to use a defined medium or, or expensive medium? Or can I just use an inexpensive medium? And is post-translation modification of the enzyme necessary? And in the question of the natural producer or GMO, the application of the enzyme is very important. Then the ease to produce it in a microorganism. In the example of the protease papain, it will be quite difficult to use to produce it in a microorganism because once secreted to the medium, the protease would digest itself. So this is also another reason why it is cheaper to use the natural producer. Then contamination risks have to be considered. Ethical and regulatory considerations are very important. And this also affects, as I said, GMOs. So for some applications, uh, we cannot use GMOs in Europe. And a big question is, do I want to engineer the enzyme? And if I want to engineer the enzyme, then a GMO is usually the um, organism of choice. So final question is, how can I find the target gene? So I, I don't, um, let us imagine a case when we identified an enzyme that makes a desired reaction from natural diversity. Then this means that the cell is actually a black box and we do not know which enzyme is responsible for the reaction. So right now we have a tremendous knowledge, so we can get many enzymes um, from databases. So there are many sequences deposited, many structures are deposited. We can even um, predict structures quite efficiently uh, with um, artificial intelligence. But if we have a new enzyme and we do not find this type of enzyme in databases, then it is quite difficult to connect the enzyme with its gene. And the objective here is to get the gene because once we put the gene into a bacterium, then we can produce this enzyme in the recombinant form and we can also change the amino acid sequence. So usually an organism is identified and then one way is to purify and characterize the protein. So by simply separating the proteins of the protein fraction, sequencing the protein, for instance, with a mass, and then obtaining the gene, either this is a synthetic gene or by cloning the gene from the DNA and then cloning an expression of the specific gene in the bacterium. And then we have a recombinant microorganism that produces a recombinant protein. Another possibility is to digest the genome of the host and uh, 
put it into a vector and put these genomic libraries into an expression host and produce the enzymes and then look at which cell produces my desired enzyme. And then I simply can identify this and have the gene or the vector. This is the second approach. And what is done nowadays mostly is to sequence the genome of the bacterium and identify a protein, which is very likely to be my candidate, then get the gene by either by gene synthesis or by cloning, by PCR amplification, then clone it into the vector and then produce it. This is right now the, uh, the, um, preferred method of the preferred method because we have a lot of knowledge available for, for new enzymes where we do not find the fold or we do not find this type of enzyme in the databases. We have either to work on DNA level or purify the protein. And with this, I would like to finish this video. And in the next video, I want to explain a bit in detail how we can produce an enzyme in a genetically modified organism. Mm -hmm.